So we got off to a good start with our OBS basic training. Now it's time to step it up a notch. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley, and today we are gonna get a little bit more in depth into OBS. I'm gonna teach you a few more little tricks to take a basic stream into a more complex and hopefully beautiful stream. But before we take a look, I just want to remind you that if you enjoy these videos, make sure that you like the videos and you subscribe to the channel. Uh, all those good things that help me get seen out in the world. Uh, you can also follow me on my socials and you can follow me on Twitch. All the links are down below for all that stuff. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're back to our little inception view of OBS. And what I want to do right now is I want to show you how to take the camera that we currently have up right now and make it a more stylistic look. I'm going to put what's called an image mask onto my uh, face cam there and just spice up the look of the stream a little bit. So let's get started on that. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to build a completely new scene, which we're just going to call camera mask. And normally, again, display capture wouldn't be here. This is just so you can see it. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to add our camera back onto this as a full screen image. So we are going to go and we're going to add video capture device. We are going to select our cam link. Click OK. And there we are. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter to my camera, but I'm not going to add it to the source, the cam link source. I'm actually going to add it to the scene. So what that looks like, instead of right clicking here and going to filters and then adding my filter in here, we're not going to do that. We're going to go over here and we're going to right click and I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to Hit the little plus sign here and add an image mask. So we can just leave that named as it is. So now I have to go and find my image mask. I do have one saved for just such an occasion. And here it is. This is my gaming mask. So I'm going to click open and I'm going to close. It. So now you can see I have a mask. You can see down to the uh, bottom right that there's a piece cut out and to the top left is a similar piece cut out. Now, usually with a mask, uh, it would be one complete shape. Now you'll see all the stuff that's down here and all the stuff that's up here. I wanted it actually cut off, but uh, the thing about an image mask, you have to have when you create it, you have to have the black go all the way around the white shape. I didn't actually know that when I built this one. It was the first image mask I'd ever made. So this is how it comes out. I could fix it, but it's easy enough for me to just kind of take care of it here. Uh, what I'm going to do is if you look at the link below, I'm going to actually have a spot where I'm going to create a bunch of image masks for you guys to, you know, steal, use how you see fit. So uh, just the ones I made up myself because I actually know how to do it now. Uh, so uh, you can go check that out at any old time. Now, the next step is we're going to go back to our gaming scene. And I'm actually going to remove myself from the top here. We're going to just remove that all together. Bam. Now to add the camera that I want to add, I'm going to hit the plus down here. I'm going to go to scene and I'm going to add our camera mask scene. Voila. So now I have my camera mask. You can actually see that it's transparent underneath and it is applied to the scene, not the actual source, meaning that if I wanted to add just the normal shaped camera again, I still could do that just by adding the cam link. See, and that one's full screen. I'll minimize it and it goes back to the camera mask. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I've proven my point. That's why in this situation, apply the filter to the scene, not the source. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this the way that I actually want it. Put my cursor to the left little nodule here, hold down alt and drag it in, cutting away all the excess to right where I want it. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the right and beauty. Now I'm going to shrink it down a bit and pop it over on the side. So now there's a bunch of me, so lucky you guys. But if I click away from this, 
there we go. I've got a little shape, but the shape, fancy as it might be, might not be enough. You'll notice most streams, uh, cameras, even just rectangular ones, have a nice little border around it. You can have big, crazy, animated ones doing all sorts of stuff, or you can have a nice, clean, simple border, and that's what we're gonna do here. I have a static border that I use, uh, so let us go and hunt that down. In this very same scene, I'm gonna add another thing, and I'm gonna add an image. And from here, so we'll call this border. And I'm gonna go hunt for my border. Here it is, my gaming border. So I'm gonna click open, and that's what it looks like. See, it maintains that same shape. And I get just through, you know, a little logo down here. If you have a logo of your own, I would suggest kind of adding it to that or maybe putting it underneath if it's like a long name or something like that. And I'm gonna say, okay. And then we're just gonna drag it on over and I'm just gonna line it up. And just like so. And then we're gonna shrink it down. And then I realize I need to make this a bit bigger. So just a few adjustments and voila. Now the next step that I'm gonna do is do something that's gonna keep these two things together for me. So I'm gonna take my border and my mask, select them both, right click, and I'm going to say group selected items. And that group, we'll just call it cam. And now I can minimize that. And now the cam is the source. And if I get rid of it, you see it all goes away. I can bring it all back. And then if I select it and want to move it around, the whole thing moves instead of just one of the two sources. And then if I want to shrink it down, the whole thing will go just like that. So then I can resize it teensy tiny. I can resize it all nice and gigantic. Bah and then put it wherever I like. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is how we use capture sources to capture different types of things and why we use each individual source. So if we go into our sources here, and we can already see I use a display capture. So what that means is I'm capturing everything that is on one particular one of my screens. Now I have two screens. So if I were so inclined, which I will be for this case, is I'm on my display two, I can switch to my display one. See, I've got some notes from the show today. Uh, then go back to my display too. So that's what that one is for. If you wanna capture all of something, you wanna use your display like this. Now, if I'm so inclined and I wanna use a different type of capture, I can go and I can add a source and I'm going to go to my window capture. So we'll just call this window capture, cause why not? So now I can choose which source I want based on the windows that I have open on my computer right now. So you can see I have the one that we saw before. You're gonna notice something right off the bat, if I shrink it, you'll notice that all of this display stuff is no longer there. I'm only capturing the window itself. So I can resize this, I can take the opportunity to cut off the top. So now I'm just capturing this. I use this one quite a lot when I play uh, GeoGuessr on stream. Once again, go check out my Twitch. There we go. So then I could take this and then throw it behind my camera like so, and then I can resize it to be full screen. Because I cut the top off, I'd have to remove the sides a little bit. But now I have this to work with. So if I just adjust it like that, now it just looks like a regular old thing. Now I'm missing some screen over here, but that's okay. Now you can capture games in your window capture, even though there is a game capture, but there's a little bit of a difference. And I'm gonna tell you what that is as we get to game capture, which we will do right now by clicking there, clicking game capture and just calling it that. And then we're gonna go find I think so it can capture any full screen application. So it'll just find anything that's full screen or I can get a specific window. So for me, I prefer to capture a specific window. It knows what to look for that way. And I click OK and then I find my window and I find Fortnite. And boom, there it is. We'll bring it down below my cam and now I've got my game mode. So why use the game capture and not the window capture when it seems like almost the exact same thing. Well, one big difference is the game capture is a little bit better on performance, although the window capture seems to be a bit more stable. Uh, you don't have as many problems if you click away from the full screen window or anything like that. But game capture works for full screen games, like I have Fortnite here right now, whereas window capture doesn't. So if you're going to use window capture for whatever game you're playing, you have to make sure to go into your settings and set it to windowed mode first, otherwise it won't work that way. So those are your big differences. 
Display capture captures an entire display. Uh, if, if you have multiple screens, you can pick between them. If you're just running a one screen system, it's just gonna pick that screen up. Window capture, any window that you have open in Windows, uh, including a game if it's in windowed mode. In game capture, it's looking for full screen applications. So that's why you were only able to see a limited amount compared to what I had in the window capture. So just remember, if you're gonna use the window capture, windowed mode on your game. You wanna use game capture, full screen's good to go. All right, diving right back in now. You might want to add little things that you can trigger on air uh, that, you know, kind of enhance the game a little bit. You might want to like a little video to pop off or something like that. Well, I have just that video that I use in my own stream, again, Twitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a media source. And I'm going to call this media source, oh yeah, which you will understand soon enough why I do that. So I'm just going to go and find the file, it should be it right here. So you notice that the file that I have here is actually a WebM file and not a MOV file or anything like that. Uh, the reason is it takes up a lot less resources, so it's not going to uh, choke the system when you try to trigger it. Also, you'll find out uh, as we kind of move forward with our next OBS lesson uh, that the WebM file is going to come up quite a bit. So you kind of have to start to get used to it. Uh, so that's that. But now we have some options underneath here. Uh, so we have the loop, so I can have this thing constantly playing if I wanted to. I don't want that to be the case, so I'm not going to select that. Uh, restart playback when source becomes active. Yes, you do want that because you want every time that you trigger it, you want it to play from beginning to end. Uh, if you don't have it restart and you have it end, then you stop it and you start it again, it won't do anything. Uh, if you stop it halfway through and then start it again, it'll continue from the middle. You don't want that either. Show nothing when playback ends. That's also important because if your video ends on an actual frame of video, then you're going to have an issue where the frozen video is up there until you clear it. You don't want that either. Close file when inactive. Uh, that, again, is to lighten the load. If you have a little bit weaker of a system or something like that, you might want to do this just so that the, it's not sitting in there. But this makes it uh, faster to trigger, uh, so I would leave it. Speed, I can actually change the physical speed of my video, but I made it the speed that I wanted it, so I'm happy with that. And then you've just got this color range, which we're not going to worry about. So I'm going to click OK. And there it is. And you saw that the down here, that the source became also an audio source. So now you can see that you can still see it here, my oh yeah, but it's gone. Now if I turn it off and then turn it on again, it plays again from the beginning all the way through and it'll do it as many times as I want. Now, uh, something I'm gonna wanna do here is I'm gonna wanna move it and put it into the position that I want. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to see it while I'm moving it because I can't resize it, I can't move it around unless it's up on the screen. Plus I wanna see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go back in here for a second and I gotta turn on that loop. Just for our own sake, we're gonna just mute this for a moment. So now we can't hear it, we don't have to worry about it. And then I'm going to shrink this down the size that I see fit. I'm gonna pop it down here. Just gonna go back in here really quick and turn the loop off. And now it'll play. And then disappear. Excellent, that's all we want. So whenever I get some kind of stroke of luck, you know, just like the boys in Entourage, you know how everything works out for them. I trigger it and that's my little celebration of a happy accident. And the last thing I wanna show you is I wanna work a little bit more with transitions. So we're gonna do two different things in this one. We're going to actually create a transition for a source on a scene, and then we're gonna create a new stinger transition to go between our two scenes. So let's go have a look at that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take our entire cam source here, the group that we created, and I'm going to make it transition in and out of the scene in case I just wanna show the game or whatever I've got behind full screen. So all I need to do is I'm gonna to go to my cam, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to my show transition, and all these different options are here, you can cut, fade, swipe, do whatever. I'm going to create a slide, and I'm gonna create a slide to the left. So when I preview the transition, it looks like that. It's gonna slide in like so. I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm gonna right click again. I'm gonna go to hide transition and I'm gonna go to slide again. And this time I'm gonna go to the right. You don't have to do these specific ones. You can do whatever you want. You can fade in, fade out, do whatever. Uh, and then if I preview that, it's gonna slide like that. So if I say OK, and now I wanna hide my cam, I'm gonna click on this. 
and it's gone. And I want to come back. Ta-da! You can do this on any single source that's available on here. Just some fun things you can do to add to your aesthetic. Uh, if it pleases you, if you have a uh, stream deck or something like that, by pressing buttons, you can trigger any source whenever you want, or you can create multi-functions that can actually bring things in any way you want. You could bring one thing up, then one thing over, all in one button. But we'll get into that in another lesson. Okay, so the next transition I want to do is actually going to be between the scenes, and it's what's called a stinger transition. And what that is, is basically an animation that comes in and takes up the entire screen at one point. And when it takes up the entire screen, the switch is actually going to happen between the scene A and scene B. It looks like it's one just nice, smooth motion that takes you out of one into the other, but it's a little bit of trickery. So let's... Uh, have a peek at that. I'm gonna come over to my transitions here and you can see where it says fade and all these other things. So I'm gonna add a stinger and then I'm gonna find, so we're just gonna call this, I'm just gonna call this MJ Stinger because of Miss Cast Joe. And I happen to have one. So again, we're gonna search for a video file. So if I select it here, very good. Now I have my times are in milliseconds. Now the transition point, because it's a two second animation, I'm gonna do it right at the one second mark to try this out for now. So that's 1000 milliseconds. Uh, you can see under here, use a track mat. That's a whole nother thing. We will get into that in our next OBS because I honestly just learned how to do it myself. It's fairly new. And now all I gotta do is click okay. And now if I switch between my scenes and then if I go back, Okay, that works, but you'll notice that the change happened a little bit early. I can see just in the bottom corner here, the change actually take place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the transition a little bit later. So what I got to do is I got to click on the little settings here for MJ Stinger. I'm going to go to properties and now I'm just going to back this off a little bit more. I'm going to take it to 1200 milliseconds. Now let's see what happens when I do it. Perfect. And I do it again. There we go, you don't see anything. So the key is just finding that exact moment that the entire screen is filled. So you might have to tinker around with it a little bit, but that's it. I hope you learned a lot more. Like I said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for when new things come out. Make sure to hit me up in the comments if there's things that you haven't seen yet on OBS that you'd like me to cover in maybe the next one, or uh, if there's anything that I can clarify better. But until next time, guys, let's get to work. Gee, I wonder where we could be. Uh, all right, well, let's see how very specific within Ottawa we can get. 373 meters.